Hello there, my very good friends, and a warm welcome and good afternoon news to you. On this one, CM Punk answers a loaded question about AEW. Could one of the worst WrestleMania matches ever be getting a rematch? Where's Wardlow? And unfortunately, some bad news about Mike Bailey. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. And this is the After News. <laughs> right, let's start this one off by talking about CM Punk. He's talking about AEW wrestlers again, but to be fair, he was asked about it this time. Yes. But, 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 you know, there's some reading into this for sure. It's Punk. He, everything he does gets analysed. I love this man. He was interviewed by a cheap heat podcast, Peter Rosenberg. Uh, oh, I see. You know, Peter Rosenberg, you know, not shy of taking a little dig at the competition mm. himself. Uh, so Rosenberg, basically, this was a complex con in Las Vegas, which I hear is really nice around April kind of it, time. It is meant to be lovely, uh, yeah. Pyramids, uh, wrestling, I heard it's really cool. Uh, he was asked, uh, I'll read the exact question, mm -hmm. right, so I don't flub his words up. Rosenberg asked, I'm not talking about the press conference. Do you have any regrets from AEW with regard to matches that didn't happen or stories that didn't get told? Um, so that's a pretty straightforward question, right? If you wanted to answer that, you could just say like, I would have been nice to do more with Sting or like a nice to do something with Brian Danielson. Like, you know, you, something that's not going to get people... I think fans always wanted to see what a Kenny Omega CM Punk match would have looked like. Yeah, well. I, I can understand why he wouldn't say Kenny Omega. Yes, but maybe. I get that. Um, but yeah, you know, there, there are safe answers to that question that wouldn't start a fire. Mm. Not really punk style though, that no, is No, not at all. Punk went, oh man, that's a loaded question. He was like, I know what you're trying to do here, Peter Rosenberg. I know. So Rosenberg rephrased it a little bit uh, and asked if there was uh, anyone in AEW he would have liked to tell a story with, but didn't get the chance to. Punk replied, uh, no, I feel like I wasted some matches on people for sure, uh, but that is what it is. Like, some people understand the business, some people don't, you know? And I think everybody here understands the business. So it doesn't uh, take a rocket science to figure out what uh, allegedly empty-headed, dumb... <laughs> uh, swear word uh, he's talking about yeah. there perhaps who Darby knows Darby Allen yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not Darby uh, Allen by the way it was Sting so <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> he made me put the face paint on I look like an idiot yeah so there you go look uh, you can, there's obviously context to take this in and stuff like that but at the end of the day he could have answered that question yeah. quite straightforwardly and just said uh, Ricky Starks. Yeah, there you go. Like a safe political. Like, he was like it, it, he was invo heavily involved, wasn't he, with with up and coming talent? He was talked to him. Hobbs, I think, was another yeah. name mentioned. Yeah, he could have. There's a few pe few people he could have given a safe answer for, but he chose not to. Yeah, <laughs> so there you go. and that's why he's the best, ladies and gentlemen. Look, yeah, it's. <laughs> He, he can't help himself, can he? And that's that's kind of, it comes with the territory with CM Punk. Uh, but yeah, I think it's not going to take a genius to line up all the matches he had in AEW, starting with Darby Allen. It's not going to be that one, is yeah, it? Yeah. It's not going to be his epic yeah. feud. I think my, still my favourite feud of AEW with mm -hmm. uh, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, because look how well that was received and the brilliance of those two did together. Yeah, it's, it's some of the other matches probably that he was in, maybe even centered around the world title. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of... Uh, <laughs> there are, man. Bits there, it, 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 the thing is, he, he says no, and I get that, and I get why he's, you know, still holding a grudge about what happened within AEW. He had a bad experience, yeah. But it, it, without question, you and I could sit here and reel off 20 matches off the top of our head that we'd have loved to have seen CM Punk have. Yeah. Kenny Omega, I realize why that didn't happen. Yes. Kenny Omega is... It's always going to be one of those what if matches, isn't it? Yeah, it will be. It will be for sure. And uh, it's a shame that the <laughs> stupid BS um, created a situation where we don't get to see those things yeah. ever. Uh, and that you can't really talk about this uh, situation without setting both sides off, really. Mm. Uh, I would consider myself kind of neutral in all this. Like, I, I don't care. I just don't care. Like, there's still elements of people who base their online personality on hating CM Punk or hating the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega. I could not give less of a hoot about that. No. I care about getting good matches and yes. stories and stuff and we, we missed a lot of them. Fortunately, we're getting some good stuff in WWE, of course. The Drew stuff was great. Oh. Um, but also... And then, uh, Gunther reference on Raw. Yeah, there you go. It's he was actually up. referencing Cult of Personality in case you missed it. It's coming up, happy. <laughs> um, but at the same time, 
It's kind of fun when he starts. Yes. He starts this is what we're in the business for. Exactly, exactly. It's wrestling. It's not Premier League football where everyone's safe and gives you a lame on. Well, unless they're David Coote. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then they, then <laughs> some of them videos, they shouldn't be making out there, brother, brother. Uh, but yeah, it's look, it's wrestling. It's chaos. Look, congratulations. What was it? The Little Cheap Heat podcast. Congratulations to them. Lovely little podcast. Not as good as ours, obviously. Well... But, we are the you know, biggest. The, yeah, we are the biggest and the best. Uh, and the What Culture Wrestling Podcast actually spoke to CM Punk, but you know, he said, "Come on, we're all mates here." Off the record, but he said, "I'll tell you what, you can let them know there is one match he actually really wished he'd had in AEW. Do you know what it is?" No, I don't. Oh, <laughs> the box! The box is back, baby. Two matches. I should have said two, two matches. matches. Roderick Strong. I mean, that would have rocked. <laughs> yeah, so. that would have been class. Fantastic. Uh, and the other match that he wished he'd had was Lance Archer. Uh, and while we're at it, let's exclusively reveal CM Punk's next WWE feud. Oh yes! Oh, we forgot about that. Garrett, it's been snowing today, and it's snowing again, baby! Wow, I've, got, I've got a selection there for Hell you, yeah, Hell yeah, brother. Uh, I've got oh, one that one. Hey, I'll get okay, this one. Let's do it. <laughs> it is raining names here in the studio. Who, who you got? Uh, his next feud is not Gunther. It is... <laughs> Bianca Belair. <laughs> so, I mean, that'd be good. Yeah. Ricochet, apparently. <laughs> Uh, All right. Uh, 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 okay. You get to spin again, I think, if you have. Uh, I'd rather not. Okay. <laughs> There's already enough on the floor. Yeah, this could, if it's not Ricochet. I'll take this one as well, then. I'll take this one. That's as well. another one who's not there anymore. So. Uh, Oro Mensa. Oro Mensa. Pro- oh, I, probably not, but why not? Good, sure. Good talent down yeah. in NXT. Yeah. Anyway, I'll um, clean up. Don't worry. Hopefully, CM Punk segue uh, is going to be working WrestleMania next year. Andy, of course, he missed it this year, unfortunately. Although he was heavily involved. This is so weird with you tidying up in the background. <laughs> he was obviously heavily involved in the World Heavyweight Championship picture, but a match that happened at WrestleMania uh, this year that was absolutely dreadful could be getting a rematch, ladies and gentlemen. Good. Um, Jay versus Jimmy Uso. I love the Usos. I, I adore the Bloodline storyline, but even I will admit that, uh, yeah, Jay versus Jimmy was absolutely trash at this year's WrestleMania. Three quarters of a star, is that what Meltzer gave it, I think? Yeah, they were three quarters of a needle. Uh, anyway, on uh, that lovely little cheap heat podcast, really good. Uh, Pete Rosemary was chatting with Jay Uso and, uh, yeah, asked him about uh, the match with Jimmy Uso, or asked him about working with his brother at WrestleMania. And, uh, yeah, Jay said it left a bad taste in his mouth. Just read what he said here. Left a bad taste in my eyeballs, Jay. <laughs> to be honest, I would like to run it back with my brother one more time. I would like uh, to because it left a b- little bad taste in my mouth with that one. I just know what we can do. The fans have no damn clue. I know me and my brother no man. And, hell, yeah, we'd have stolen the show. If just things happen. We're all a team. I love you guys. Uh, and whether or not it's going to happen at WrestleMania or not, I never want to see that match again. I, I get it. Maybe, you know, you have an off night or timings were changed or whatever. But it was just sort of 10 minutes of super kicks and then the most obvious betrayal of all time. Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, of course, they have a better match in Yes. Them, because how could it not be better than that? They main um, event Mania a few years ago, didn't they? Like, yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah, like they're, I, they're an all-timer WWE tag team for sure. Uh, Jay's having a great singles run. Yeet. Jimmy's a good, like his act, his singles act is really fun. Brilliant. Uh, he's a little goof. Um, but that match, I, I would never like to see that ever again. I can understand for why they'd want to do it because- wanna, yeah, right the wrong. Yeah, and it was probably agented to hell. Um, by whoever put, helped them put it together. But it wasn't good. And Jay's entrance was class. It was. And I'm glad we got to... <laughs> yeet. Kept, kept me warm. Yeah. I'll say that. It, it sure did. Uh, it, was, it was chilly in there. Yeet. Chilly in Philly. Smash the place up, Andy. What a day we're having today. Chilly in Philly. Um, yes, I don't want it. No, no, thank you. <laughs> I don't want it. But I'm really excited for them to team up at War Games. Obviously. Yes. Where's Wardlow? What's the theme song for Where's Wally? Can we get his oh, name in there? Oh, where's Wardlow? Oh, I've no idea what the Where's Wally oh, thing is. Where's Waldo, of course, as they call War, it in Waldo? America. Ward, Wald, 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 Where is he? Where's Big Mike? His name's Michael. He is. Big Mike. Uh, he's still injured. Oh. This is Fightful. They were asked. Sean Ross Sapp was asked. What's going on? Where's Wardlow? Uh, 
the exact sentencing uh, phrasing of this is he's been sidelined with injury. That's long been the word within the company and within the Undisputed Kingdom group. So yeah, he is still he disappeared right. for it feels like about two years. I've I seen know him. he goes missing all the time. This guy, uh, yeah, Wardlow, rough couple of years in terms of not only this injury but cool offs. Um, he obviously got the big push with the TNT and like after the MJF stuff, it was really hot but it didn't really last all that long. Um, he's twisted and turned alignments along the way. He's been over, he's been not over, he's been in this group, he's not been in this group. It's, yeah, it's not been the best couple of years for him. Uh, I wish him all the best in his recovery. Yes. I, I, still yeah, like, yeah. I still like Wardlow. Is it wrong for me to say that he's probably right at the very tippy top of my list of people alongside Ricky Starks that I want to see jump to WWE? Mm. I'd love to see how WWE would present Wardlow and Ricky fair. Starks. I feel like that's probably going to happen as well going forward. Yeah, who knows? But uh, yeah, it's, if it's an injury-related thing, like you say, it's just really unfortunate this. You'll get Best some time added on as well, probably. Oh, God, yeah. yeah. I didn't even think of that. The practice that we don't like. Um, but it is nice to clarify these sorts of things because often we'll sit there on the podcast and go, ironically, where's Willow? Where's Wardlow? Yeah, and and yeah. then sometimes, you know, it, you can sit there and say, oh, they're not using this star correctly or, oh, this person's uh, ducking creative. And it's, it could just be... They're really suffering. They wish they could be back in wrestling. So we hope he is very soon, along with Willow. Absolutely. Uh, right, finally, oh, an update on Speedball Mike Bailey. Another AW adjacent thing, this. Not a good one, though, unfortunately. Uh, loads of speculation recently. And he probably is heading to AW by all accounts. But... Uh, the speculation that he was going to be involved in the Continental Classic, which starts next week, if I'm right in mm, thinking that. Can't wait. Um, yeah, it's not going to feature to be more Mike Bailey, unfortunately. <sighs> uh, Fightful Select, Sean Rossap reporting um, that, yes, he is expected to go to AEW, but his TNA deal uh, runs till the end of the year. He's finished up. He said his goodbyes at the Detroit tapings, so he's kind of done with TNA stuff. But... I suppose unless AEW forks out to sort of get him out of that last bit of the deal, technically, he won't be working for AEW until the new year, and that would rule him out of the Continental Classic. Yeah, that's a shame. I got a bit excited when I saw yesterday the PW Insider report saying that he might debut in the Continental Classic, because Mike Bailey is a phenomenal in-ring wrestler, so what better way to introduce yes. him than by having five great singles matches in the tournament? That would have been cool. Contractually, it cannot happen, which is a bit of a shame, but I'm sure there are good ways to debut him. I, sh way. I should mention, yeah, that the reason we know all this is contractually, yes, his contract runs till the end of the year, but part of his contract said that he can start talking to companies in November. So he's probably all but signed with AEW yeah. by these reports, but that still doesn't mean that he's allowed to step in the ring for them. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So there's some interesting ideas, like I've seen some cool fantasy booking going yes. around for Mike Bailey. Uh, the best, and I do not for the life of me remember who tweeted this, I apologize to this Twitter user, but the best suggestion I heard was you pair them, pair, pair them with Alex Abrahantes. Yes. Right, and you do uh, obnoxious, unknowing, oblivious heel gimmick where it's smiley and cheesy and corny as a Karate Kid slash Cobra Kai <laughs> Karate Dojo thing. Yes. That's incredible. Like, he would be so punchable. Yeah. And Abraham has really, really white teeth, hasn't he, Mike Bailey? He does. Like, he's a, he's a good looking guy. He like, is. he's young looking. He's, he's lovely as well. You've worked with him in the WCW. Yeah. Like, he, he, he's incredibly talented, but he doesn't act like he's like, well, I'll I just do whatever. I think that would be a really good act. You'd want to smack him in the face yes. uh, and then he'd kick your head off because he's really good at karate somehow. Uh, also, Alex Abrahantes is really good at the cheesy stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not so good when he's trying to be a badass. <laughs> but, you know, if, if, the, if the role calls for, like, wackiness... Yes. Pretty I'm, good. I'm excited to see what they do with, with Mike Bailey. Like, that potential match that they could put together... A bit, weird at the moment with alignments and what have you but if you did like a four-way osprey ricochet mike bailey carl fletcher i mean hell took chuck to kester in there for me jesus christ what does yeah, that look like it's crazy they've got such really exciting talent in, in aw and they're just adding to it like i said no more people for aw all right mike bailey's allowed because he's class stone cold steve austin's available yeah uh, <laughs> yeah it may get happen don't you he's gonna be in the continental classic i think you heard it here first stone cold steve Man. That's what they have to call him. That's legally. him, Steve McMahon. And if you want other news, That's like the, the morning news. Steve McMahon's a famous rapper, of course. Steve McMahon, a man. Yeah. Uh, oh. Famous footballer. Yeah. Uh, Champions League winner. Yeah. Champions League final scorer. Yeah. And actor yeah. in goal too. Also ginger, so. Yeah, good for him. There you go. Anyway, uh, the morning news is here if you want to watch that. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>